The Sinister Secrets of Talking Tina, a Talking Doll. Introduction. In the quaint little town of Oakwood, a dark cloud loomed over the Johnson household. Brian Johnson, a mild-mannered man with a troubled past, found himself at the center of a chilling nightmare. It all began innocently enough when his wife, Emily, returned home with her daughter Christy, clutching yet another doll in her tiny hands. Little did Brian know that this seemingly harmless toy, known as Talking Tina, would unleash a wave of malevolence that would consume his very existence. Christy's eyes sparkled with delight as she embraced her new companion. Talking Tina was no ordinary doll, she had the ability to utter phrases and even respond to Christy's touch. But as the days passed, Brian couldn't shake the feeling that there was something sinister lurking within Tina's plastic frame. Strange occurrences began to unfold whenever Brian found himself alone with the doll. It would spout abusive comments, filled with venomous hatred towards him, threatening his life. The malevolent words echoed through the house, resonating within Brian's mind and fueling his growing paranoia. As he struggled to comprehend the source of this wickedness, he became convinced that his wife was behind it all, a notion she vehemently denied. Section 1, The Unsettling Presence. At first, Brian tried to dismiss his fears as mere figments of his imagination. Yet, the more time he spent in the presence of talking Tina, the more he became convinced that there was a malevolent force at play. The doll seemed to possess a life of its own, its icy gaze piercing into his soul whenever he dared to look into its eyes. One evening, Brian found himself alone with the doll while Christy and Emily were out. As he sat in the dimly lit living room, an eerie silence enveloped the house. Suddenly, talking Tina's voice pierced through the stillness, her words dripping with malice. I hate you, Brian. You're a worthless excuse for a stepfather. I'm going to kill you. Trembling with fear, Brian scrambled to his feet and stumbled towards the staircase, desperate to escape the clutches of this unholy plaything. But no matter how far he ran, he couldn't escape the terrifying sound of Tina's voice echoing through the house. Section 2, A Battle Against the Unseen. Convinced that his wife was orchestrating this malevolence, Brian confronted Emily, accusing her of dark deeds. But Emily's eyes filled with genuine confusion and fear as she denied any involvement in the doll's sinister behavior. Brian's accusations only served to strain their relationship, pushing them further apart. Determined to rid himself of the cursed doll, Brian took drastic measures. He burned it, buried it, and even tossed it into a nearby river. Yet, each time he thought he had rid himself of the malevolence, talking Tina would reappear, unscathed and more intent on fulfilling her threats than ever before. The doll seemed to possess an uncanny ability to find its way back into Christie's room, no matter where Brian attempted to hide it. It was as if an unseen force was guiding its return, taunting him with its presence. The more Brian fought against it, the more the doll seemed to grow in power, its influence spreading like a dark stain across their lives. Section 3, The Transformation As the days turned into weeks, the Johnson household descended into a nightmarish existence. Brian's once-loving stepdaughter, Christy, became increasingly entranced by the malevolent presence of talking Tina. Her innocent laughter transformed into sinister giggles, and her once bright eyes grew vacant and glassy. One fateful night, Brian awoke to find his stepdaughter standing at the foot of his bed, her body frozen in an unnatural pose. Her once vibrant features had transformed into a doll-like expression, her voice replaced by the chilling whispers of talking Tina. You can't escape me, Brian. I'm part of her now. And soon you will be too. Brian knew his wife was responsible. He wanted nothing more than to strangle her, but the thought of hurting or harming her made his heart sink like lead in his chest. He could never bring himself to harm Emily, who had become so much a part of the family. With tears welling in his eyes, Brian collapsed onto his bed, burying his face in his pillow. He cried for hours, unable to get Christie's haunting voice out of his head. When morning came, he felt no better. After Christie had gone off to school Brian went into her room, there was the doll, staring at him with its malevolent yet lifeless eyes. Brian snatched it off the bed intending to take it into the nearby woods where he would chop it up with his axe, bury some parts and toss other parts into the fast-flowing river that coursed through the forest. When Emily returned home later from dropping Christie off at school she found Brian's lifeless body at the foot of the stairs, his spine broken, his skull fractured his dead eyes gazing sightlessly across the hallway to where talking Tina sat propped against the wall gazing back at him. What had happened to Brian? 
Did he simply slip on the stairs and fall very badly or were there more sinister forces involved? We may never know but talking Tina is still out there somewhere, perhaps waiting for her next victim. Please tell me what you think of this video. If you enjoyed it consider giving it a like, sharing it with your friends, and subscribing to my channel. Thank you for watching.